Hey. Hello. Hello, world. We no finally that. we figured out how to do the four square. Finally. We went to there we go. College and learned how to do it. So do the viewers see the green bar that tells us when we're talking? <laughs> oh, yeah. Mine's yellow. Oh, yours is yellow. I wonder if yeah. they'll see it when they watch this video. But yeah, we're back, lads. Back in town. I don't know when the last one we did was. Like what? February? January? March? April? It was a long. March. Yeah, it was a long time ago. I honestly it feels like a yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Better. <yet. laughs> but um, but yeah, it's good to be back, man. Long, long drought of it. nothing to talk about. <laughs> just, just nothing. What's uh? What's well? There's there's a five. few things to talk about. Ryan and Colin are fucking house yeah. buddies now. Roomies. We did uh we did congratulations. Together. We've been together in Ottawa. Yeah. Now this is my room. Yeah, Welcome. We, we are in the Colin Lair. Yeah, that's the lair. Free whiskey. Freaking <laughs> whiskey. Yeah. Yo, on a side to note, to Marco. On a side note, Fitz started collecting McDonald's coffee cups. Um, he did. Yeah. That's actually that's, Doug. That's actually mine. Yeah. <laughs> I just I was like, oh shit, I probably should have thrown that in the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Fitz. I, Sorry I do have my that. my iced coffee here from earlier today though, so he's not wrong. Dope. There is a yeah. bit of a collection. So Doug's just collecting hockey pads. Yeah. Yeah, thinking about getting a new mask pretty soon. There you go. <laughs> yeah. What about uh, what about you three though? Like, what's uh, what's the highlight of the last three months? Spill it. Doug got a car. Doug got a car. Oh yeah, I bought a car. I bought a used Honda Civic. Yo. And uh, first thing I did, I was at the dealership. And he let me take it for a test drive. And I was like, bro, I just want to see how the speakers sound. And he's like, okay. And I, uh, I put on super deluxe. Nice. And uh, I was like, yeah, what do you think about this song, dude? He's like, it's, a, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know who, the, who's, who it's by. That's <laughs> You're like, well, this song is paying for this car. So you <laughs> that is super oh, important man. though, man. You buy a car. It's like, the speakers are super clutch like you have they have to be good yeah, yeah. your yours sound terrible ryan it's <laughs> <laughs> like the level 10 dude it's crazy guy loves his low end yo but now um mike myself and doug can race so yeah whenever, whenever we get the chance let's do it i think i have a bit of an advantage though because mine's standard True. so i can make it louder before the race starts you know what mm, like right. i can rev my I'm engine you know, scare you guys, just like intimidate you a little bit. Yeah, but then you'll see me and Vince coming up behind you, and you're gonna be real scared. Vince, um, I, I'd only be scared because I feel like you'd blow a tire and run me off the road. <laughs> That's the only thing scary about Vince. <laughs> yeah, just to let you guys know, like our van is probably no more, and uh, we're gonna be moving on. For Pretty it. sure we already I, maybe I tweeted really about it a few times. I think that, like for the past three years, we've been like, yeah, we need to. <laughs> this. this is on his last list. <laughs> I kind of miss yeah. posting stories of Vince getting towed every every week, you know, on, while we're on tour. Yeah, well, you're the only one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, dude, there's like been some special moments inside that van, you know. Yeah. Real good times. Also, some a lot of long drives. Awesome. Yeah, I m- awesome. remember when we uh, we were stuck in we were on that highway in Texas cooking. Oh and yeah. Was, yeah. And there was no water left in the van. <laughs> Yeah. And traffic was not moving, and we were just sitting there. We that was died. fun. Yeah, a lot of front bottoms have been played in that van. That That's... van. Yeah. What do you guys think is the most played artist in Vince? Um, I feel like, and no. this is a pretty yeah. easy one. I feel like it's after the party. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Ooh, I'm pretty sure. And segue. <laughs> yeah, let's segue into that festival we just announced today today yes that was today yeah, four mm-hmm. chord baby four chord yeah when singers, singers, not playing on let's, they, let's they play that. four chords yeah. i mean it's because yeah. travis travis was intimidated by mike so blink had to drop <laughs> well i always thought it was weird that they were on it anyway because like blink is more of like a three chord band i was like four seems like yeah, a lot yeah, for yeah, that yeah that is a lot oh, yeah that's true that's so true no but it is dope dude like rise against the headliner now mm-hmm. so Appeal to Reason goes hard, man. I love that record. Yep. Love Rise Against Rocks. Yeah. Yeah. Great band. What? They're really good live, apparently. I've, I've seen, seen them live. Doug, I think we saw them at 2014 Rock Fest. 
I didn't. Oh, you didn't? I didn't. No, I, I don't remember why. Were you smart and came to see the descendants? Maybe. No, I think I was dying in my tent. <laughs> I think I was, I think, I don't know, man. I didn't sleep the night before, so it, was, it wasn't that fun of a festival. Yo, I saw during the day. I saw Rise Against in 2011 with a day to remember and title fight. That's sick. That's Dude, actually the, insane. The title fight documentary about that tour is so cool. Yeah. yeah. I saw Rise Against in 2013, maybe with the Gaslight Anthem. And, and, uh, and who else played that? Uh, Hot Water Music. That's right. Yes. Yeah. I Were you there? That, yeah. At the, at the CE Center. 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 Yeah. yeah. And I was like in grade seven at the time, and it was like a general admission show, and I I didn't see the bands. I was like in the middle, and I just couldn't see anything. I would like I was jumping the entire time trying to watch the show. The hangar was also like the worst place to have a show. It just sounded yeah so bad because it's just a gigantic empty concrete room. <laughs> so yeah, with like, with like aluminum ceilings. Yeah. So you couldn't hear fucking anything. It was terrible. But yeah, but... even like more bands on four core. There's so many good ones. You know, State Champs, Four Year, Mayday, yeah. Mayday Parade. Um, it would actually be insane if like we could play more shows with those bands. Yeah, that'd be really yeah. cool. It'd be pretty sick. Yeah, we'd we be should like sick. spam message them. Like, I'll go after Champs when you guys go after Four Year. Yeah. We'll just be mm-hmm. like, let's put a tour together. I feel like it'd probably do well. I want to tour with that question mark band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same, man. Same. Four Chord is dope. Let's also discuss Riot Fest. We've always wanted to play it. This is the first time we're going to play it. Yeah. Yes. Finally. There's so It'll many bands on that, like, the three days. Yeah. It's just like, you can't even. I wish we could see all three days, but we're there for one, right? Yep. But yeah. um, run the jewels, man. Run the, run the jewels. Boys. Couple, couple mics. Couple <laughs> mics. <laughs> but yeah. Killer Mike. His, Mike. His dream. <laughs> Rancid's on, on the show we're playing. That's like a dream of mine. Play with Rancid. Now I get to do it. I hope it gets crushed, Colin. Like our dreams of you know what I hope? You know what I hope? <laughs> What's gonna happen? Rise against is gonna <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. But no, for real, there's so many bands on that show, it's just ridiculous. What are some others on that date that like I can't even remember? Who are we who else are we playing with that day? Uh run the jewels. <laughs> uh, I don't oh know. uh Faith Wait, is it public knowledge what bands play on what on what day? Yep. Yeah. I don't know how they announced that? I yeah. thought they just kind of told you when you show up. No, it's on the poster. Oh, okay. It's, it's like Taking Back Sunday. Oh, right, right, right. Whoa, Taking Back Sunday. Andrew, dude, Andrew WK, come on. <laughs> Let's we, go. We're gonna go party hard. We're gonna party hard. Yo, we saw Andrew WK at Mavericks in like twenty. Yeah. Like that was crazy. Oh, yo, dude, Citizens playing the same day as us too. True. Cool. Hell yeah. No three days grace though, eh? No three days grace. No. Yeah. Which is a sh- it's a shame because they started it. You know what I mean? <laughs> started a riot. <laughs> That's they did. true. Their festival. Yeah. Festival around them. Let's start a riot, baby. Good song. Dude, that whole record, One X. My God. Imagine it wasn't Rise Against. It was Three Days Grace. <sighs> dude, well, you know that Three Days Grace is still a band with a different singer now. Dude, I yeah, saw yeah. yeah, I saw him live with the new singer. Yeah, bad. Uh, yeah, Is it bad? Right, <laughs> <Really bad. laughs> Riot, Riot doesn't want to talk shit on other bands. <laughs> like, dude, He's I like, know. you never know when that Three Days Grace tour is coming through. I know Three Days Grace is watching. I'm pretty this, sure you so. have <laughs> shit on Skiba on this podcast. Probably. We definitely have. Probably, yeah. <laughs> I love you, Skeebs. Just an alkaline trio. <laughs> <laughs> Skeebs. <laughs> yeah, you know. My boy Matthew, man. Imagine walking up to Skiba for the first time being like, Skeeber. What's up, Skeeber? <laughs> my hang my up, boy Skeebs. Fucking hug. Yeah. yeah. Skeebers. Yeah. But yeah, dude, those two shows are sick. Like, honestly, we all just can't wait to get back to shows in general. Like, this is so sick to announce shit. Yeah, hopefully they happen. Yeah, for real. Do you guys oh, see like, happen. any reason they wouldn't, though? No, dude. No, not at this point. Happen. Have you seen the Stanley Cup playoffs? Like, the the buildings are, like, almost full. Yeah. Yeah. 
and that's yeah. inside and these are outside which is arguably safer and yeah. i feel like oh yeah vaccines i mean vaccines are already super available to the people in the states in canada it'll be pretty soon i yeah. mean we'll all be fully vaccinated before going on that tour yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, sir. that tour he says <laughs> Yeah, that, three day that, tour. That three two day, day tour. Record. I saw I saw someone record. on Twitter be like, every band announcing tours and bearings is like, we're playing two festivals. Yeah, <laughs> as if we're not maybe planning something else. I don't know if you can cut that out or not, but no, whatever. I'll leave it. We're in. cutting out so much already; it doesn't even matter. <laughs> but also, like, I saw one tweet where it was like, Canadians can't like see shows yet but like canadian bands can go play shows like i feel bad for the people in canada man they're gonna have to wait till like december january yeah they can they, go to detroit. they weren't stripped of their yeah. careers yeah, yeah. So you're true the stripped of their dreams you're gonna take the opposite right away you're gonna look back and be like, Fuck you. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Dude, when we're in the states we're not coming back man we're just gonna keep playing <laughs> not, not coming back i'm not coming back yeah. we'll set up a house show tour in the midwest and just keep going <laughs> imagine doing a house show tour in the midwest for five months yeah oh, we can do it fuck. some people do it every small town. oh god dude every small town every kid's shed <laughs> <laughs> got a shed just you know send us a dm yeah. <laughs> we'll play bring the lawnmower <laughs> what some kid <laughs> <fucking mowing> <laughs> Dude, why are you mowing a lawn in a shed oh true i guess the crowd would be on the grass and we'd be in the shed maybe maybe it depends it depends what the venue is like yeah where yeah, you know that room is. Is. anvil that smashes an anvil on the stage oh like the you canadian know? metal band anvil yeah you know what if there is a band called like lawnmower and they are about to do a breakdown and someone just revs up a lawnmower <laughs> in the backyard on the shed date dude oh my god like a hardcore band's name lawn <laughs> tight lawn we got <laughs> think that's tight <laughs> john deere this dp name you know? dude no no dude the band's name is lawn and order Lawn oh my order. god Lawn go. deer is the that it's like a, it's a political punk band lawn and order. that actually is harder though like lawn and order like, that is like tough guy hardcore yeah so yeah that's that's rough that's uh, your uh alabama alabama hardcore. i'm an alabama rock outlet was it hard rock outlet yeah something like that that was our genre for a bit off my pillow sorry man. dude i had my <laughs> i had my foot on his pillow see yeah well get that out of here yo we like cook dinners and shit here sometimes it's pretty crazy that's fucking yeah, i'm gonna be not. right back yeah All what right. was what was on the menu uh, uh we had burgers the other night i had some stir fry the night before yeah nice Colin, what'd you have tonight though Colin's usually the cook i'm usually the dish guy yeah Ooh, someone's getting off easy. I cook, he cleans. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Are you kidding? I'd ra way rather. There's nothing worse than like you. Cook yeah, before. that's true. And you get you get full and you look at the mess and you're like, great. <laughs> yep, I did it today. It's brutal. Yeah, but like tonight was a rough one, man. I haven't eaten dinner yet. I had Ritz bit sandwiches a bit earlier. <laughs> What'd you have for dinner? Uh, chicken. Nice. Nice. Mike, Doug, what do you guys fish around for tonight? <laughs> fish I had a around. steak. I got myrrh cooking for me. Barbecuing up Yo, steaks. we need a myrrh a... on this pod. <laughs> I had a potato. <laughs> One potato? <laughs> I had a potato and like a tofurkey. Tofurkey. <laughs> it wasn't the most extravagant night, but it was pretty good. It worked. There we go. It was good. Yeah. Uh, you know. It got the job done. <laughs> <laughs> Told the boy. Yeah. <laughs> the stomach's full. <laughs> i'm all carved up baby all carved up but yeah shows are coming back tours coming back we're stoked um boys let's get into your, like those musical upbringings who wants to start it off fitz when did you start playing guitar and like what made you want to fucking become a rock star well i decided i wanted to be a disappointment to my family yes 20 years ago I was, <laughs> I was, I was two years old. Um, I don't know. I listened, I listened to a lot of ACDC and stuff. 
Uh, my dad showed me Back in Black on vinyl when I was four years old. And then I was like, I want to play guitar. Started taking guitar lessons when I was like six, I think. That's early. Um, yeah. And then I started playing like school talent shows when I was eight. So got started on the performing thing pretty early. And then just grinded ever since, Fucking you know, for it. just Dude, kept going. Back in Black, like you on vinyl, like my dad, the first CD he bought me was Back in Black CD for like a road trip. So I feel you. Yeah, dude, it was so sick. I was, I don't know, I got like really hooked on music like early on. So yeah. I would like come home from kindergarten and go down to my basement and put on Back in Black on vinyl and just sit there and listen yeah. to it. Dude, a six-year-old kid like moshing in his basement. <laughs> to back Dude, on black. it was it was crazy. I would go to school and I'd be like, "Yo, have you guys heard of this band Steppenwolf?" I was like five. Steppenwolf. Everyone's like, "I just got a new Lego kit like yesterday." What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. It, it was it was definitely weird, but yeah. yeah, it was a good time. Mike, how about you? I feel like I got into music late, dude, but I guess it wasn't that late. I think it was like twelve. <laughs> I started drumming when I was like 11 or 12 because me and my best friend Robin both wanted drum kits. Um, so yeah, we both got drum kits. And then I think I like got drum lessons for like two years and my drum teacher introduced me to Blink-182. And then my next door neighbor and my friend Sam would come over all the time and we'd cover a bunch of Blink-182 stuff. And then I quit for like two years in high school. And then my, my high school crush broke my heart <laughs> and, and I got back into drumming because my drum and music teacher, my high school music teacher was like, she ain't nothing. There's more fishes in the sea. And then I started drumming more. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Drums are my life. Oh my God. Oh. And then, yeah, that's it. Oh did, did he say there's more, there's more fish in the key of C? <laughs> <laughs> More. oh my god i wow. mean there's there's not really keys with drumming so dude my music teacher my music teacher got stung by a, like a like a stingray or whatever a manta ray or whatever they're called and his whole left body would like compulse like randomly like every like few that minutes like a weird thing to add. <laughs> <laughs> that that's how he was so good with the ghost notes he was <laughs> you know yeah, they were out. never intentional <laughs> yeah. they were never he intentional. was just be like he was naturally groovy and he loved jazz <laughs> unintentional ghost notes dude yeah that's sick <laughs> dude i remember one time in grade nine he told me to do a a four on the floor beat and i didn't know what it was i was like what are you talking about i don't know what four on the floor is what is this shit like a weird and that's what changed my life <laughs> dude that's sick dude i i started playing guitar when i was like nine I think I started taking guitar lessons um, just because I like saw Tom from Blank and like some 41 and I was like I want to play like these bands you know like this is what I want to do I thought they were so cool some 41 was the first band that I found and like my friend showed me like their CD and I like heard Fat Lip and I was like what the fuck is this and then after that is when I found Blink and then it was like to the moon you know I was like I have to learn how to play first date there's just like there's nothing else to do in life. Wait, how old were you when you started listening to music? Probably nine. Damn, that's like early nine. too. Yeah, I can remember. I was just late, bro. I can remember vividly in grade seven when I was twelve, saying that. Oh no, it must have been earlier than that. Then, yeah, it must have been like grade four. But vividly saying that Nickelback's "How You Remind Me" was my favorite song, <laughs> and like that shit rocked. I was like, this is good. Yeah, dude. <laughs> but then I, I was found the pop punk bands after that but yeah i just started playing guitar and took lessons with my boy matt marinelli shout out matt marinelli <laughs> shout out like three years we would take guitar lessons dude and um he taught me a lot but some lessons we would legitimately just talk about movies for like the full half hour i wouldn't learn anything and then i'd just be like all right see you next week <laughs> we'd just talk about horror movies and shit he was dope but um money well spent yeah Your that's why I, that's why i play friend. power chords to this day you know yeah i'm, I'm sure paul, i'm sure paul is stoked to hear that yeah <laughs> oh, dude, matt would tell him sometimes matt would be like yeah like ryan really liked nightmare on elm street eh? <laughs> and paul would be like yeah what are you teaching him down there <laughs> dude, oh matt you just matt, ruined dude. his career yeah after that i just kept 
playing guitar and got into singing with it too. And then it all just kind of snowballed into starting bands in high school. And then honestly, Bearing started when what we were like 18 or 19. So I felt like this band honestly was like my first like legit real band. Like the high school bands never felt like real, you know? Were they, what was the first high school band called? Yo. Are we going to go down this road for everybody? We should. We should. Yeah. Just quick, quick. I had born 94. Uh-huh. Then we changed our name to No Allowance. Born yeah. 94. And then we changed to Day by Day. <laughs> day by Day isn't bad. Day by Day is okay. But yo, real quick, just to end my musical upbringings thing, my first show ever was the Grade 5 Talent Show. I went on with my three other friends to play Damn It, like a cover of Damn It. I was so pumped. I felt confident. Everything was great. I sing the whole song as the lead vocalist. Mike's not on. The whole <laughs> fucking song dude no and during the bridge the principal comes up on stage to turn the mic on and she's like looks at me like what are you doing i'm like i'm instantly what are you doing are you so a fucking professional <laughs> so embarrassed dude and i'm 10 years old in front of like 500 kids no. you were like this is the sound guy's job yeah it was a nightmare dude i was so embarrassed but whatever that was my first show Hey, at least it was only, at least it was like halfway through the song. Yeah, I felt well, it sounds bad. You still got like another chorus in yeah. at the very least. Um, Dude, the first, the first song I ever played on stage was called Ch- uh, Chili, Chili Today Hot Tamale. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's for my, for my grade nine band. I yeah. think mine was a song I wrote called Pump Up the Stereo. <laughs> And uh, and then the second one would have been like uh, I think it was Purple Haze by Jimi Hendrix. That's sick. Yeah, kind of hard. I was getting I was getting into it. Callum, rip through the the upbringings, dude. Uh well, my dad listened to a lot of Rush. Oh no, <laughs> no. Um, my dad listened to a lot of like classic rock. As I was growing up, he showed me he gave me some of his records, and I fell in love with music. And my brother played guitar, and I wanted to play something else. I asked my mom if I could play drums. She said no. <laughs> Too fucking loud. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, uh, come on. Okay. Uh, bass. <laughs> I want to play bass because I didn't want to play the same thing as my brother. So my dad got me a bass for, for Christmas one year. I think I was nine. Same age as you. Hey. And maybe eight. I can't remember. Eight or nine. And uh, then played in a uh, just just played bass, took some lessons, and then eventually started some bands in high school and started a bunch of bands that never really worked out until I found you. We do the band name thing. Well, yeah, well, some of Colin's bands played with bearings. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, yeah. name them. Yeah. Name them. They're funny. Murder State, Brain Damage, and Scally Tap Rats. Good times. And then suddenly in college, I quit all three to join bearings. What a it good is call. like what a good punk's, call. punk's no longer the answer. Not the answer. I'm a I'm a pop punker. Colin used to be a mohawk guy. He did. He was back in high yeah. School. All right, Dougie, where'd your music come from? Where did the power? Um, well, it, it's kind of weird because I when I was really young, I would do like my dad was would was like a producer, so i'd just be there on the weekends and he'd be like doug do you want to do a song i'd be like yeah i don't fucking know how to play anything and he'd be like that's fine and he would just like write it out instrumentally and then i would just sing about whatever i wanted to sing about and uh i had a i had a song about msn when i was in about grade four or five and all my friends on msn um i had a song about power rangers had a song about hockey but it was like a weird way to get into music because (laughs) <laughs> he i'd like sing a part you'd be like oh i don't know try it again but uh you know <laughs> i'd be like okay um and so it was kind of weird it, but it was a good maybe practice for later in life when i'd enter a studio and not be that weirded out by a producer being like hey you gotta do that 37 times yeah, <laughs> yeah. um but i kind of just did that on the weekends and for fun and it was just a fun thing i do with my dad and then hockey was the big thing till i was about 12 and uh some stuff had you know i think my mom uh lost her job and so the money wasn't really there to play rep anymore which was kind of a blessing in disguise because i started playing intercity there was a couple guys on my team who loved blink 182 and green day 
and I went to a sleepover with them, I think, and they all knew how to play guitar. They were like, hey, dude, like, this is how you play, damn it, like, all that stuff. And I was like, yo, mom, like, can I get a guitar for my 13th birthday? And I think I think my dad got me the guitar, but I ended up getting my own guitar for my 13th birthday, and I would just spend, like, three to four hours a day playing guitar and uh, taking guitar lessons with the same place a couple of guys on my hockey team were taking them. And, um, yeah, I played in some high school bands. We played – in Branton, but like also some other places as well. And then went to college and met you guys. And Crazy. Been all roses since then. Man. Yeah. <laughs> what was what was the first band called? The Sound Project. Sick. And it was it was a blues rock band with my buddy Marcus on drums, What's my buddy that? Junior <laughs> on guitar. Junior. And, uh, Wait, Junior and Marcus? That sounds like a fucking trio there. Douglas Junior and Marcus. Yeah, yeah dude. Oh, and then we had the sound project. The funny thing is though, we all like loved Hendrix and all these like classic rock, like blues inspired artists. But Josh was just a bassist we found. And he had long hair and loved mud vein. Mud vein. <laughs> <laughs> so he'd be at band practice, like, can't we play something a little heavier? And we're like, no. Mm-hmm. Josh, you're in the sound. <laughs> Our old guitarist before Fitz used to play in mud vein. <laughs> <laughs> what? T Snitch. We had this joke going that T Snitch, like, looked like the mud vein guy oh uh, <laughs> true all, like, the mud vein guys like paint their face and have colored hair that's like spiky and shit yeah yeah mud, mud vein's great we gotta find those old videos of uh no, the riff of the week ones oh dude weekly I, riff. I got them all on my phone the weekly riffs yeah uh, that, those were legendary need to be re- we should uh riffs. open them up on youtube one day with that uh, t-switch's <laughs> permission yeah but riff me like Mike Legendary. and Fitz, have you guys ever seen the Riff of the Week videos? Of course. Okay. Yeah, Classic. Yeah, I, I think if Mike saw them, he probably wouldn't have joined the band. So that's a good thing. <laughs> I think Mike yeah. watched those with a completely straight face and go, that's pretty dumb. <laughs> no, no, there's a few. He would. He would love. He would love them. I think there's a couple like, you know, the one with the amps, they roll out. And, like it's just t-shirts like, damn, damn, damn. Dude, my, my favorite is the one where he's like, on a like a not a stretcher but like what people get tied to before they get ex, ex, executed yeah. Yeah. and he's like on one of those like with yeah. like a dolly and he's like holding a dolly guitar, and i dolly him into the room and he's just like da, 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 and that's a legendary that's, that's that one sticks out to me the weird thing is you guys oh you had the lockout rooms at capitol yeah, we did capitol. yeah i was we were, just we like were imagining we were like what one of the other bands would have thought like just seeing you and snitch <laughs> on the dolly wheeling him down the hallway at capital rehearsal yeah oh my god yeah we were the weird band at that place man yeah well i think not no, now you were probably the normal band at that yeah. place dude remember the band that, with the bassist that would play the same riff from the same song every single week for like an hour yeah was yeah, it beat he it you would just warm up with it I don't know. I can't remember what it was, but it was annoying. It, it, it was a Michael Jackson song for sure, and he would just play it for like an hour. But there was no band playing with him. Was there ever a moment, like, I know, Mike, you said that, like, you had two years where, like, you quit or you didn't want to do music. Was there ever a moment with, like, all you guys where you're just like, yeah, I'm going to take a different path? Yeah. I stopped taking uh, – I think it was just because, like, I didn't like socializing – and I was like intimidated by my guitar teacher, but I stopped taking lessons for like two years. Yeah. And then in that time is when I got really good because it wasn't like a chore, not really good, but like I got like well enough to like perform because yeah. like it felt like a chore. Like he would give me homework, like learn this song and like have it learn for next week. And it's like, bro, I'm a kid and like, my attention span would change so much so i would like want to learn o- oasis one day and like nickelback the next and shit um but yeah i took like a year or two off um and then when i came back i was like more stoked than ever I think yeah the only, the only thing for me ever was like i loved football obviously a lot and i wanted to like when i was 13 i was like i'm gonna make the nfl right but after breaking a few bones, I was like, yeah, I don't want to give up playing guitar, you know? So I just kind of stopped playing football. I was like, I'll just watch. 
Yeah, I think for me it was like uh, when we were when when college came around, I was gonna go for radio broadcasting instead of doing music, so I wouldn't have met you guys, obviously. Yeah. And I, I talked to my brother, and he was like, "Bro, no one listens to the radio." It's true. <laughs> He's like, "That's radio's not even gonna be a thing in ten years. Like, don't go spend money on that. Like, move away and go to school somewhere, and don't don't live at home. Like, go leave, go to college somewhere else." Yeah. You just go take music, you know, just go do it. If you, if that's what you want to do. And I did. And, uh, you know, it was good advice. Cause I ended up meeting you guys and, um, yeah. we're, you know, we're, we, we tour once in a while. Sometimes every now and then. Sometimes so, we know, do a, a three uh, once every two years. <laughs> they run with Technically. Uh, yeah. We haven't toured in uh, almost two years. We're not even trying guys. What are we doing? <laughs> no, it's only been a year. A year. Okay. But man, yeah. Actually, oh, little. Well, actually, like it'll be almost. Back. Yeah, it'll yeah. be close. When you do look back at like you know the shit that we've done even so far, it's pretty sick, man. Like, obviously, I'm super grateful for everything that we've gotten to play and do. It's, I don't know if any of us thought that we'd even get this far, you know. But we've just kept like pushing the train ahead, just I don't taking know. it one step at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Just vibing, dude. It's been nice, uh, coming back and announcing like. <laughs> Riot Fest and Four Chord as the first things back. I texted Colin about it today. I was like, how much of a flex is this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First first show back. These are the ones we're doing. I'm like purposely posting them on Facebook so like my family sees and shit. Yeah. And it's like if you're damn. posting it on Facebook, you know you care. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Dude, how how stressful is it though? Like thinking, especially for Mike, like having to run for because we'll have tracks and Mike plays to a click and stuff, having all of that back, playing a set, like having to make it all cohesive and work. Yeah, yeah we're gonna like have to crazy go to through some about. rehearsal together, dude. Yeah, sure. yeah. it's gonna dude, be was, a lot. It's gonna be wild. I was thinking, we have a full remember record how- we haven't played anything of <laughs> <laughs> on that on that um that last tour we were on. We got the offer for these shows or whatever, and we were so stoked for them, and then. Shit wiped out, and now like almost a year later, we're doing it. Yeah, more than a year. Yeah. That's kind of. Crazy. Yeah, like- but yeah, I, dude, the show's gonna be coming back. Are gonna be so sick. But yeah, just relearning everything is gonna be a little. Hey, does anybody know how to play like you know, aforementioned anymore? <laughs> <laughs> that might are be we, the, are, that might be the we, only uh, one I do know how to play. Yeah, so. are we even gonna play aforementioned anymore? The real oh, question. Oh. I don't know. Oh, that's a hard question. Comment below. Um, <laughs> what's your What's your perfect set list? Comment below. Comment below. Seven songs. Letters home. Indecision. Yeah. Sway say. seven times. Spent. Spent. <laughs> spent. No one's listening to spent. <laughs> Make sure. <laughs> There's that podcast those guys put out a while ago, and uh, I checked it out, and they uh, their one of their favorite songs was spent. And I was like, whoa, okay. Some love. And hello, it's you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lads. Well, solid episode. Oh, are we getting the shades out? You have shades. I don't have any shades down here. I got shades. Hey. What's up, motherfuckers? You're going to put the headphones on your eyes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah you look like the that guy with the thing x-men yeah yeah doug did you lose a pair of shades because like no cap there is a pair of shades on my house yes i left them at, i left okay. the, the shades of your house and i left a pillow in omi's car i okay. lost a pair of shades and your and your coffee right over there and my coffee yeah make sure you keep it keep good. it warm warm that shit yeah, up can you, can you like keep it hot what does doug drink what's his order black oh very nice all right, lads. Peace out. One Peace love. out, everybody at home. Peace this out. is what Omi uh, drinks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Peace.